Hi, thank you for the introduction. Uh, so I will talk about uh, attribute-based encryption. So let me start with the definition. So attribute-based encryption is a public key encryption system where there are multiple users that have different secret keys. And the idea is that you can encrypt a message in such a way that only some of them are authorized uh, to decrypt the message. Um, so the way that it is formalized is as follows. There is uh, an authority and she has a master secret key. The master secret key has full permissions. It can decrypt any ciphertext. And then given this master secret key, it is also possible to generate constrained keys. So every uh, secret key, except of the master secret key, is identified by some value that we call uh, uh, the attribute of the key. And this attribute is taken from some exponentially uh, large space, so there can be many keys. Uh, and then when someone wants to encrypt, then he runs the encryption algorithm and he has to provide uh, some function f that we call the policy. And this policy determines who is allowed to decrypt. So this function takes as input uh, attributes and then for each of them it outputs uh, either zero or one to determine uh, if uh, this attribute is authorized uh, to decrypt. Uh, okay, so now uh, given a candidate uh, ABA construction, then in this work we focus on uh, two uh, properties of, uh, of the construction. So the first one is the security guarantee. So there is full security and there is also a relaxed notion that is called selective security. And I will explain the differences uh, in the next slide. Um, and uh, the second property is the supported uh, class of policies that we can associate to the ciphertext. So, of course, we want it to be as expressive as possible so we can have more complex, complex uh, access structures. Um, okay, and a special uh, case that uh, will be uh, important uh, for this talk is the notion of IB that it was actually defined before ABE, but ABE is a generalization of this, but I like to think of it as a special case of uh, ABE. So this is ABE where the supported policies are only point functions. So every ciphertext is targeted only for a single attribute. Okay, so uh, let's talk about the security notions. Um, so uh, the, we want to somehow define the security and we want this definition to, to capture this uh, notion of decryption rule where the secret key for X can decrypt the ciphertext for F conditioned on the value of F of X. Uh, so let's say we fix uh, some function F. So we can now uh, partition the attribute space to two types of uh, attributes, authorized attributes and non-authorized attributes. Uh, and then we want to say that even if there is a collusion of users uh, that try to combine their keys, then as long as none of them has an authorized key, then they cannot uh, decrypt uh, the message. So I want to say if there is a collusion uh, of adversarial users and all of them are in the white areas, the non-authorized the non areas, then they cannot decrypt the ciphertext. Um, so in order to, to capture this requirement, there is a security gain. And this is how it is uh, defined. So uh, there is uh, the challenger, she holds the master secret key, and then there is the adversary that controls all of the colluding users. And the game goes as follows. So first the challenger uh, sends the public key to the adversary, and then there is a queries phase. Uh, so in the queries phase, uh, each time the adversary can uh, send some attribute X, and the challenger should uh, generate uh, a key for that uh, specific attribute and send it back to the adversary. And they can repeat that uh, multiple times. Uh, and then at some point, the adversary uh, asks uh, for a challenge ciphertext. So in order to do that, he, he specifies uh, some policy F. And the challenger should encrypt the message. And then the goal of the adversary is, uh, is uh, uh, to decrypt the message. Uh, and we only care about adversaries that, that qu uh, query for keys that are non-authorized, uh, because this is the only case where we need to guarantee security. So we assume that he only queries for uh, keys in the white areas. And then uh, uh, his goal is to eventually break the ciphertext. <laughs> okay. Uh, so now before I go into uh, any specific uh, construction, I want to talk about how a uh, security proof that satisfy, uh, satisfies this definition should look. Uh, so we want to show a reduction to some computationally hard problem. Uh, so in other words, we want to say that if there is an adversary that has advantage uh, in the security game, we can use this advantage in order to, to, get, to gain advantage in a computationally hard problem. 
So we need to simulate the challenger and to interact with the adversary and eventually to somehow uh, use this response in order to, to solve a, a hard problem. So we have to construct the simulator and the simulator uh, gets us input and instance, uh, let's say of the DH or LWE or uh, any assumption that you want. Uh, and then we need to simulate all of the responses of the challenger. So it means that we need to simulate uh, the public key and then we need to answer all of the key queries. Um, and eventually we need to simulate uh, the challenge ciphertext and we want the challenge ciphertext to be hard because we, we want to say that if the adversary can uh, uh, decrypt the ciphertext then we can use his response in order to solve the, the computationally hard problem. Okay, so um, I, I want to give intuition why it's hard to construct uh, such a simulator. So, okay, we need to be able to answer all of the queries uh, of the adversary and we don't know in advance uh, which uh, attributes he will, he will query. So imagine that we somehow create a simulator that is able to, to, to simulate a key for any possible attribute. Um, so it's nice because now we, we can interact uh, with the adversary and, and he won't notice that, uh, that we're in a simulation. But uh, the problem is that, is that with that is that now the simulator can also uh, simulate valid keys uh, for attributes that are authorized to decrypt the ciphertext. So it means that now the adversary can simulate a, a functioning key for an attribute that, that can decrypt the ciphertext and can, then he can uh, locally decrypt the ciphertext and he can, uh, um, and it means that he can, he can locally solve the hard problem without even interacting uh, with the adversary. Um, okay. Uh, and because of that, it means that the hard problem cannot be computationally hard because uh, the simulator should run in polynomial time, so we showed an algorithm that could solve the hard problem. Okay, so it means that our simulator needs to specify, uh, uh, needs to satisfy very uh, specific uh, 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 requirements, which are he should be able to, to simulate keys uh, for the uh, non-authorized attributes, but he shouldn't be able to simulate keys for the authorized uh, uh, attributes. Um, but why is this uh, difficult to achieve such a simulator? Uh, because the capabilities of the simulator are determined uh, by f, but we only learn f at a relatively late uh, stage of the game. So we need to create the simulator and answer queries even uh, before we know what f is. Um, okay, so this is why getting full security is uh, challenging. And the immediate way to avoid this issue is to use the relaxed notion of selective security. Uh, so in selective security, we simply uh, require that the adversary will announce F before the game even begins. And then it doesn't make it trivial to come up with a scheme that is selectively secure, but it, it, it makes the, the problem easier. Uh, okay. Um, so, um, I will briefly go over uh, previous uh, results. So there are two uh, main uh, lines of work. One of them relies on uh, group-based assumptions and the other one on uh, lattice-based assumptions. Um, and both of them uh, evolved in kind of a similar way. So first there were constructions that are selectively secure for IBE. And I remind that IBE is ABE for point functions. Then there were uh, constructions that are uh, fully secure for IBE. And then there were constructions that are uh, for larger uh, uh, class of functions, so ABE, but only selectively secure. And then eventually with the group-based uh, uh, assumptions, the, there was a breakthrough with the dual system uh, by uh, Waters, and the, the, there were constructions that are fully secure for ABE. Um, and with lattices, this uh, problem uh, remained open. Okay, so uh, we partially uh, solved this problem, not completely, but we show a fully secure ABE based on the LWE assumption and the supported function class is what we call uh, TCNF, which is C uh, CNF formulas uh, with constant uh, locality of the clauses. So each clause can access only a constant uh, number of bits of the input. So for example, a three set is a three CNF formula. Um, okay, so uh, our approach uh, takes uh, uh, three uh, steps. So in the first one, we use an idea that is called the, the tagging technique that was uh, presented uh, by uh, Gentry. And he presented it in the context of uh, group-based uh, 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 constructions. Uh, so we 
we managed to construct something that, that has the same kind of behavior, but uh, is based on a lattice-based uh, um, assumptions, and it also uh, uses uh, PRF. Okay, um, as a second step, uh, we generalize this approach. So we show that if, instead of starting from a PRF, we start from a constrained PRF, then we can get AB instead of uh, IB. Um, but in order to implement this idea based on the lattice techniques, we need the constraint PRF to satisfy some uh, special uh, structural properties. So in order to, to get the, the final uh, construction, we also need to, to show a constraint PRF that, uh, that satisfies uh, those requirements. And this is where we have the, the limitation on the supported uh, function class only for TCNF. So that uh, will be the last step. Okay, uh, so let me uh, describe the, the tagging idea. Um, so uh, I focus now uh, just on uh, IBE because, because this is the context that, this, uh, that it was presented for. So now there is only a single authorized attributes and the adversary can query for keys for all the other attributes. Uh, okay, so here is the idea. Um, you add another uh, dimension to the attribute space. So now there are uh, uh, attributes and there are also tags. So each attribute is uh, associated with a row and each tag is associated uh, with the column. Uh, so now when you want uh, uh, to encrypt uh, respective to some attributes, you go to the respective uh, row and then you randomly select uh, one column and this is where you generate the ciphertext. Uh, and when you want to generate a secret key, you do something similar. So you go to the row of that attribute, and then you randomly choose a column, and then you generate a key that can decrypt the entire row except of that column. So it's like a punctured key that can decrypt an entire row except of a very specific cell. Uh, so now in terms of correctness, as long as the ciphertext and the secret key doesn't fall on, 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 the, on the same column, then we're good and decryption should work. Uh, so why is this useful uh, for full security? Um, so here is how the simulator will look. So now uh, uh, we, we, when we um, uh, initialize the simulator, we, uh, we first uh, choose for every uh, row some column, we call it uh, the, the, the pink column, and we choose it even before the game begins. And now instead of uh, choosing uh, the cells of the ciphertext and the, and the secret keys randomly, we will always uh, stick with those uh, random cells that we already chose uh, before the game started. So when someone queries for a secret key, uh, we will always puncture it at, at uh, that pre-chosen point. And equivalently, when someone uh, asks uh, for, uh, for ciphertext, we will always generate it on, on that point. So you can already see that now uh, the simulator can answer uh, any ciphertext query and any secret key query, but he still cannot decrypt uh, uh, challenge ciphertext because his, uh, his simulated secret keys will not work on his simulated uh, ciphertext. <laughs> um, but on the other hand, uh, it is still indistinguishable uh, to the adversary and this is uh, because uh, if on every row you only see uh, just a secret key or just a ciphertext, then this pin column, it, it looks uh, random. So this is exactly, this distributed exactly the same as, as, as in the real construction. So the only uh, chance for the adversary to, not, to, to distinguish between those, uh, those two ways of generating the secret key and ciphertext is if he gets both a secret key and a ciphertext on the same row. But we know by the security game that he's not allowed to make such a query. Um, okay, so our first result is that we show how to implement this high-level idea uh, based uh, on LWE. Uh, and, in, and the way that we implement this random mapping is by a, a PRF, where previously in Chenfrey's work, it was done with a random polynomial. Um, okay, uh, so... This is the IBE idea, and I will not show now the technical details of the construction because I want to talk about uh, ABE. Um, okay, so let's see how to uh, uh, generalize uh, this idea for ABE. Uh, so looking back again on the IBE construction, 
the ciphertext was uh, intended for a single attribute, so we could uh, focus on that specific row. But now we're in ABE, so the ciphertext can be, targ can be targeted to multiple uh, attributes, which means it can be targeted to multiple uh, rows. So uh, if uh, we uh, ignore for a moment efficiency, we can uh, generalize uh, the tagging uh, idea as follows. So uh, imagine an encryption algorithm that simply goes uh, over every attribute, and then if the attribute is authorized, then it generates a ciphertext for that attribute. So for every authorized row, it samples a random column and gen it generates a ciphertext there, and eventually it uh, concatenates everything and outputs it as, as the ciphertext. Um, so in terms of uh, security, the same uh, argument should work. We can, in the simulation, just uh, predetermine all of the random columns and, and then uh, uh, stick to them when we simulate the ciphertext and the secret key. But uh, now the problem is with the, with the efficiency. We have to somehow generate those ciphertexts such that they are small and it only takes polynomial time. Um, so what are uh, our uh, efficiency requirements? Um, we need to have some succinct description of those uh, random columns that are associated uh, with the ciphertext. And in order for the security argument uh, uh, to, to, to follow, we, we need the succinct description to satisfy uh, two properties. Uh, so the first one is that uh, we should be able to, to simulate this in the pink area when we are in the security proof, because we wanted the security proof to always use those predetermined uh, uh, cells. And the other one is, is that uh, we want this uh, succinct description to not reveal more information about the, the pink cells than what he must reveal. So in particular, it shouldn't reveal the values of those pink cells on the rows that are not authorized uh, by F, because we want to claim that the, the secret keys are still indistinguishable from the, the real secret keys where those cells are chosen uh, randomly. Okay, um, so uh, we need something that satisfies uh, uh, those uh, two uh, requirements, and there is something that uh, exactly uh, fits into that definition, and this is a constraint PRF. So what is a constraint PRF? Uh, so in a standard PRF, there is the seed, and then if you have the seed, you can compute the PRF on any input, and if you don't have the seed, then everything looks indistinguishable uh, from uh, uniform to you. And in a constraint PRF, you can also generate constraint keys, and then those constraint keys can evaluate the PRF only on a subset of the inputs. So similarly uh, to uh, ABE, a constraint uh, seed is uh, associated uh, with some policy, and this policy determines on which values, uh, sorry, on which inputs you can evaluate uh, the PRF and, and on which inputs it looks uh, uh, random uh, to you. Um, and for uh, this work, we will uh, need a constraint PRF that uh, only supports uh, a single key. And uh, it, it, it actually makes uh, things easier because there are constructions that, that can only support a single key. Uh, okay, uh, so now going back to this uh, high-level idea, let's see how to use the constraint PRF. Um, so uh, in order to, to commit to those pink values, we will simply choose some uh, PRF seed. So we say that the, 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 the input of the PRF is the, is, is the row, and then the output of the PRF is the corresponding uh, column of the, of the pink cell. And then when uh, we want to generate uh, a secret key, we will simply use the, the output of the PRF respective to the C that we already chose. Uh, and um, when we want to generate a ciphertext, then now instead of choosing random columns, we will associate it uh, with the constraint seed. Uh, of, of the C that we already chose at the beginning. So uh, by the properties of the PRF, we exactly have the guarantee that now this constraint seed uh, describes only the, the pink points of the rows that are authorized by F, but it reveals no information about uh, the other uh, points. Um, so this satisfies the second uh, requirement. Uh, and now uh, uh, in order to, to, to satisfy the first uh, requirement, uh, we need to, to somehow change uh, how we generate the ciphertext in the real scheme in order to make it indistinguishable from the way we generate it in the simulation. 
so what we will do is that we will, uh, we will also describe it by uh, some constraints uh, for the function f, but we will start from an uh, independently chosen seed. So we'll have this uh, sigma prime that we uh, generate freshly every time we encrypt, and then we will uh, compute out of it just the constraint seed for f, and this is how we will describe uh, the ciphertext in the real scheme. Um, okay, so uh, I didn't uh, talk at all about uh, lattices or how to actually implement uh, uh, those ideas, and I want uh, to just say a few words about it because I don't have time to go into the technical details. Um, okay, so the construction uh, is based on the techniques uh, that were developed by ABGG et al, and their construction shows a selectively secure uh, ABE, so we use their selective technique, where the thing we commit to uh, with the selectiveness is this uh, uh, PRF seed. Uh, and now, um, uh, because of the uh, technical details of, of how their uh, construction uh, is built, then we cannot uh, implement it with any constraint PRF, and we need it to satisfy uh, some special property, so we call this property a gradual evaluation. And I will, um, I will give some uh, intuition uh, what it means. So uh, fix some uh, input x, and now uh, consider two possible ways for computing the PRF value on that uh, input x. So the first way will be by using uh, the master seed, and another way would be to first generate a constraint seed and then use this constraint seed in order to evaluate uh, on the point x. So uh, any constraint PRF has a guarantee that uh, the output uh, will be the same uh, with those two kinds of computations. But we require something way stronger, which are the computations will be equivalent if you describe them as circuits. So it should be ex exactly the same sequence uh, of gates that you compute, uh, whether you use the master uh, seed or you use uh, constraint seed. And this should work for any function that authorizes uh, x. So a very, a very large number of uh, constrained uh, keys. Um, okay, so now, uh, lastly, in order to, to construct a constraint PRF that uh, satisfies this definition, we rely on the work of uh, DK and Y, so they showed a constraint PRF uh, for bit fixing that can support a, a constant number of keys, so uh, we, we, we change a little bit uh, the parameters there and, and get a construction that supports a single key, but, uh, but a constant uh, locality for CNF instead of, uh, instead of uh, bit fixing. And this construction also satisfies the gradual evaluation property. Uh, so that's it. If you really have any questions, uh, please come down to the microphone. If there are no questions, let's thank Rotem again.